This time in the vlog, we are showing you how A&M Construction converted this Cat 330 into a forestry machine that climbs super steep slopes. So stay tuned to learn about all the modifications they did so it can climb really steep slopes in steep forestry terrain. So this machine started as a regular CAT 330. It's a next-gen machine. It was split from its undercarriage and it was fitted to a Timber King TK732 undercarriage, which is a high and wide. So you have a lot of clearance underneath, hence the high and wide stance. The machine comes with full rock guards here to prevent any rocks or something like that from getting in between the rollers and the rails. The TK732 undercarriage features a final drive off a of CAT V7 and then these are single grazer pads for climbing steep slopes. So it's a really beefy undercarriage. We've got the double top carrier rollers here. So the machine was mated with the undercarriage from a feller buncher and that what allows it to climb. You get about 40, 45% tilt front and back and side to side on the machine underneath. The cab here is built by Wacon. They're a company out of Penticton. They built the cab, they build all kinds of other things for forestry equipment like Hyundai's forestry line, but Wacon built the cab and they also built the thumb and bucket, which we'll take a look at. This is the bucket and thumb on the 330 tilter, as they call it. So this is a progressive thumb. So it maintains contact through the full range of motion of the bucket. So if you're way out there trying to reach for something, you'll be able to actually grab something or right up close to the machine, you can actually grab something with a progressive thumb. This bucket and thumb was built by Wacon Manufacturing out of Penticton. On the front here, they've actually got two little teeth, which have Canadian flags on them, which I love. And they can be used for stumping or kind of pushing something back. So it's a really heavy duty bucket. They've got a wear liner package in here, you know, a progressive thumb. It's really built for some tough, tough digging and tough stumping and grubbing as they call it. But this is the front end. And then you got the stock 330 stick and boom. And you come around here the undercarriage, which is off a Timber King TK732 feller buncher. So as it's working steep slopes, will self-level. It's done through the cab on the joysticks, but the machine will be able to level itself. So if you're working on a really steep slope, say 40%, you can actually stay completely level and work the machine and do what you need to do, which, we're, which is what we're about to see. So this is about as custom as it gets. You notice all around the entire machine, they've got extra guarding to protect from you know, sticks and trees and all that thing because it's working in the bush. Uh, one of the more neat things that I've noticed here is they've got some angled guarding here. So instead of not being able to see from your cab down to your right hand track, they've got actually some, some louvers here that allow you to see through and actually get visibility down to your right side of your machine. So very custom. And the cab here, you'll notice they've got the extra lighting. They've got the reinforced glass. They've got the stock seat and touch screen in there but the machine itself is beefed up you've got these little catwalks you've got the additional step everything about the bottom end of this machine is not oem or stock this is fully custom built and this is a one-of-a-kind forestry machine here in bc
AM Construction is based out of Grand Forks, BC, and they have kindly let us come out and film their beautiful Cat 330 Tilter. So, big thank you to AM Construction. If you are interested in running something like that, they're always looking for operators. So, highly encourage you to reach out because that's pretty cool to run. We're somewhere up some logging road about 30 kilometers uh, just to the east of Christina Lake. So, we're kind of in the heart of timber country here in southeastern BC. So, right here, what I'm standing on is called Slash. So after they've logged the uneconomic parts of the timber resource, which is treetops, stumps, trees that don't meet size requirements, rotten trees are left here and they're what's called slash. So slash can be kind of managed in three ways. You can either pile it and burn it, which reduces fuel load in the forest floor and frees up space for tree planting. You can either spread it and leave it as is to naturally decompose or you can come in with the machine and mulch this. And when they mulch it, it gets spread about on the forest floor. Either way, any three of the methods, you're returning nutrients to the forest floor. So that's what A&M Construction is out here doing. They're out here piling up all the slash on these steep slopes so that it can be burned later this fall in the winter when there's no fire risk. And then once it's been burned, they freed up space on the forest floor for tree planters to come in and actually plant trees. So the new trees that are gonna grow here need real estate to grow and managing the slash that's left over from logging is one way that they do that. So this is part of the process of managing British Columbia's timber resources. The process which we're talking about in forestry is called silviculture. It's the application of science to study and manage timber resources and create wildlife habitat. So managing the slash of the leftover is part of that process because after this is piled up and burned later in the fall, Tree planters will come in and plant trees in here and this will grow back to the forest it once was. On some pretty steep terrain here in BC, certainly not the steepest in the world, but this averages about 40 to 50 percent slope. So you can see why that machine needs to have the auto leveling feature or the tilting feature because when you're working on this slope, if you're level when you're working and grabbing and, and grubbing, it's a lot easier to work and pile brush than if you're swinging over and kind of worried about tipping over. So 
having that 330 be able to tilt and level itself is absolutely crucial. So that machine I've been told has worked on these slopes up to as steep as 65%. So that's pretty steep. I mean, we just walked up this. This is only 50% roughly around there. It kind of varies, but I'm, I'm winded. So a little bit of a, a tidbit on, uh, we talked about the undercarriage, which is the Timber King. Timber King back in 2003 was actually a Caterpillar owned brand. It was manufactured by Blount International. It was sold by Cat Dealers. In 2006, Caterpillar actually acquired the rights to fly their flag on that machine or put their branding on it. So from then on, it became the Cat Feller Buncher lines. And then in 2019, a company called Weiler was formed, Weiler Wheeler, whichever it was. And that company actually bought Caterpillar's forestry line. So the Cat Feller Bunchers became Weiler Feller Bunchers. So that Timber King undercarriage goes back quite a few generations of machine. And as you can see, it's still performing to this day. They really don't build them like they used to. The whole point behind the high and wide undercarriage, which is on that machine and many other forestry machines, is that machine can walk over stumps, it can walk over rocks, it can walk over high points, which is absolutely critical when you're running in this terrain because there really is no road here. These guys are pioneering the road in this actual cut block. So the high and wide undercarriage is absolutely critical. chatting with him. I actually didn't know that when we talked about the cab, uh, Wacon built that. So Wacon is that manufacturing outfit out of Penticton. So when they built that cab, they typically put risers on them so that they can get a little bit higher and they make the cabs tilt forward so that when they low bed the machine, they can make height restrictions. But that machine, Wacon actually didn't put a cab riser on. They actually wanted to keep it at low enough so that they didn't have to tilt the cab to transport it so the machine can go, can go as is because with the Found a bunch of undercarriage on there. It sits a little higher, so it gets that machine up a bit higher. And they wanted to make sure that for the customer, for AM construction, that the machine could be low bedded as is. So it's actually a little bit shorter cab than most forestry cabs. And it has emergency escape hatches in the top and the back, which I didn't know about, which is really cool because when you're working on them steep slopes, you know, it's kind of dry right now, but when it gets wet, you get on some wet rock, you get in some muddy stuff, anything can happen. But.
So after A&M has come through and cleared all the slash, the tree planters come in and replant all the trees in the cut block. And this is what kind of the early stages of growth look like of some of the trees. So these are some pine, there's some interior Douglas fir up there. There's a couple of large, but mainly replanting pine here. So this is what it looks like after this is the regeneration of the forest. So as you can see, it's necessary to clean all that slash up because the forest floor here is pretty clean and then these trees can actually grow. But this is what it looks like in 20, 30 years, whenever this will be reharvested and we'll do it all over again. So big thank you to a &M Construction for having us out to check out their Cat 330 Tilter. This is a BC forestry contractor at their finest coming up with solutions to solve industry problems and building custom equipment to do it. So a big thank you to them. I'll leave the link to uh, a and in the description below if you want to learn more about them. But I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you learned something about part of the timber management process here in BC. This is certainly not the entire process, but this is part of it. And we hope you learned something about how that machine was built and what it does here. So thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next episode.